Good evening and welcome back once again. So here we are, we're on to PES 2021. If you're familiar with the channel, you'll have seen that I've been playing PES 6 on the PC. I have put PES 6 on hold, so we finished the second season. That was planned from a while back. have had a brilliant time on it. We probably will go back to it one day because I will get the edge to go back to the older game. I've pretty much played almost every single PES game since I played, I think it was... ISS 2 back in the PS1 days. I can't remember if I played the first one or not, or if I started with the second, I really can't. But PES 2021 is not one I've played until I bought it recently, but it is pretty much identical to PES 20. The main difference being is that they updated the squads, but in terms of the Master League, they didn't make any changes. The gameplay, I think, is pretty much the same. And then, of course, eFootball came along, and that's a, that's a different story. I'm looking forward to Master League coming out on eFootball. I've got some ideas of what I want to do for a while. Let's jump in, we'll, we'll talk about what route we're going to go down, what club we've chosen and, and why we've done that. So if you're not familiar with pairs, or even if you are, there's two choices when you first start a mass league. You can either start with the club team lineup, which is the squad as it is in real life. But what I would normally do in the past would be to start with the Master League original lineup, which is where it doesn't matter what team you start as, you start with the same players and it's made up players and they're not that great. Some of them are very poor. In PES 2020 and 21, the one good thing is that most of the players are young so that they can improve. I really like that aspect of it. But most PES players, you know, will have played with the original lineup at some point and will have a love-hate relationship with some of the players. There's some classic ones in there. I mean, I remember back in the day of like Castolo and uh, Zimeles or Espinas, different players that you, you loved. And some of them were really decent players in the end. But yeah, we're going to start with the original lineup. I want that challenge. I want to start from the ground up, start from scratch. Now, in terms of what team I want to start as, I've been thinking about this for a while, but I really want to start as a Division 2 team somewhere, like a lower league team. That limited me a little bit in terms of what leagues I could use. I thought about an English team, but I really want to go down the route of a different country, just for a bit of a different feel, a bit of a challenge. And I've decided upon Malaga. Not 100% sure why. I was just looking through lots of different teams. One of the main things I looked at was, it, it sounds strange, but I was look, having a look at the strips. And I quite like the strips that Malaga have got. And on this option file that I've got, which I'll talk about, there's three strips on there, which I like. And I don't know, I just got a feel from it. And I looked up a bit about Malaga. I'm not going to lie. I, you know, I don't know masses about them. I do remember them being in the first division for quite a while until, I think it was a few years ago. And, you know, seeing games of them playing. I wouldn't lie and say I know a mass of amount of their history and things like that but it might be one that i'd be interested in doing and i just want to pick a team that i'm not too familiar with just for something different i could have easily picked you know newcastle again or real madrid or barcelona or you know an ac milan i wanted something fresh now in terms of the manager it doesn't really matter you just pick someone i don't really like picking someone that's a real manager so i think i'm gonna go with this guy and we might as well stay with our youtube name and we'll stick with my real nationality being english now, in terms of the settings, I've been thinking about this for a while, and you can change these anyway. So, to start with, I think I'm just going to go on regular difficulty, just until I get used to the game a bit, but that'll crank up uh, in time. Negotiation difficulty, I've got as easy to start with, because there's a few things I'll talk about when we start looking at transfers, but there's, there's a couple of downsides to PES 2020 and 2021. Whichever one you're playing, Master League will be the same, but we'll get into that later. I did want to start with a large budget, but I am going to limit myself to some things in the first sort of season, and we'll talk about that again during transfers and i thought we'll stick with the, the euro currency being the fact that we're in spain and this is it we're into the actual master league it's obviously the 2021 22 season that's normally on here i did get an option file from eFootball universe which was previously pez universe they do some great option files now i did have to pay to become a member and i think it was about eight quid to get the option files there are plenty of good free ones out there but looking at their stuff for a while and I've had their stuff before back in the day you know they always do a top job with the strips and the squads and things like that and just looking in the game plan here you'll see what I mean about the squads no real players this is the squad that we go in with now in terms of the actual formation not necessarily the lineup so far these are the changes I've made I want to go for 4-3-3 and what I want to do is push the the wing backs so we're going to play a pretty wide offensive team we're going to have a defensive midfielder just to protect the back four. And then we'll have a, a centre mid and an attacking midfielder. And in terms of who we might actually play, we'll probably have to sort through this quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, that's probably what we're going to go with for now. But bear in mind, we will be making some signings. We're going to have to look for some centre backs. I think we could do with a, a right winger over a left winger, a goalkeeper as well. 
and I'm just in negotiations here. I'm going to have a quick look at the youth team. And what we'll do is we'll just filter by the overall rating. I do want to sign Harrington, which I'm going to do pretty much straight away. So he'll come to the uh, the first team squad. I think I might want to get Bjer. He's 17, he's already 66. And if you look at his weak foot, his condition, his injury, resistance, possession there and aggression, he's got a couple of skills. And I think he could be one that we maybe want to think about signing. If we get rid of some of the older players, we might want him as like a backup, one that we can improve. One other guy I remember from 2020, Texera, who was a really good left back. He's only 16. I think we are going to sign him. We'll just leave it for now to see what transfers we might make for real players. Now, in terms of my squad, I'm actually going to put up a few for sale. So I've sorted by age here. We are going to look for a goalkeeper. So what we're going to do is we'll have a look at transfer policy. We're going to place on the transfer list. I'm going to go in budget settings. And what I've done is I've changed all of these to pay as or receive as salary budget. Reason for being is what I found in 2020, salary seemed to be the bit that I struggled on to have enough salary to pay people. And as players get better, you need to pay them more salary. Any other sort of income I get, I wanna receive a salary to increase that as soon as I can. Players can already start with like a team role or they can gain that or actually improve it by starting with a lower type team role and then increasing that. If you go on your team, it'll show you which players have already got this. Now, because we're a pretty rubbish team, there's not many that will be filled. So you can see here, yeah, no players have got that, but Vrani is in line for potentially team player or creator. Rising star, Arcas is classed as a rising star. Now, Hervey, he has an effect on the team itself. So he doesn't improve the finances or the team spirit. However, he can improve other players with condition and with their growth, so how much they improved. What you can do is if you've got players like this already, great, but when you're buying players, you may want to consider, if you're torn between a few players, having a look for someone that's got one of the higher rated roles that might improve your growth, for example. So if you look down the bottom, you know, like Legend, I think Legend, when you start off, only Messi and uh, Cristiano Ronaldo have got this. When you're searching for players in the transfer market, you can search via this as well. If you get a player like that on board, they're gonna improve the growth of all of your players. So it's with registered position. So I forgot about that, sorry. Okay, so you could potentially have someone in any position, but if they're captain, other players will earn more XP. But looking at there, depending on the rating that player gets can affect how much your other players are getting XP as well. So if that player has a poor game, they're probably not gonna get as much XP. So bear that in mind as well. Now we're just gonna have a look in training. I'm gonna have a look at skill training first. You can only train one player at a time. And basically, if any players are eligible for this, it'll say in the bottom right. I've already had a quick look through these, and there's not really any decent ones. There's some skills, Mihailov uh, heading, because that's actually a pretty useful one. You can see it takes 45 days. I believe there are skill uh, team roles you can get where it reduces training periods, things like that. But we're going to choose that for now. We might as well have someone training at the moment into a special skill. Just general training itself. I think I'm just going to keep these for now. But once we've decided, you know, our lineup to start the season and any transfer we've, transfers we've made, we'll probably come back to this. So as you can see there, I did skip forward uh, one day and the two signings were made from the youth team have actually joined in the squad. I thought I'd just have a quick look at the negotiations. What I've done as well as I've gone through some plays and added them to my list. Now, some of these won't be for now, they'll be for the future. I'll show you who I've added to my list of potential players to buy, but... Normally what I tend to do is I always focus on youth. Eventually I want all of my players to be 23, 24, the oldest. Obviously these are the top players. You can filter, generally it's by highest rated first. But if you press L2 or R2 on the PlayStation, you can see you know what the current annual salary is, what the market value is, release fee, which is massive in PES 2020 and PES 2021. Not just for players you buy, but for the players you've already got in potentially losing them. I think it's a little bit overpowered, the release fee. Nearly every single player you try and sign pretty much demands that a release fee on their contract and often you won't be able to sign them unless you agree that. There are tricks around that and some players will accept a contract assuming you pay probably over the odds in terms of salary but there are ways around it so you could buy a player and then the next time it's available because you won't be able to renegotiate the contract straight away I think it might have to be a full year renegotiate the contract and keep trying to renegotiate it until you then get to the point where 
you get them to accept that contract without a release fee. Now, when they're already on your team and they've got maybe two or three years still on their contract, you can be a little bit more patient. When you're first going to sign them, you're probably going to have to give in and give them a release fee at least short term. So that's something just to bear in mind. But on the other hand, it also means that when you're signing players, you can look out for these uh, players with a release fee. If you meet that, so like Odegaard there, if you put in a bid now and bid 30 million, Arsenal don't have a say. They have to accept it and you're just negotiating then with that player for their contract. But yeah, just have a look down here. You can see Botman's on my list, but he's 36, nearly 37 million. Gallagher, he's not on my list, but you could get him for just under 11 million. Got great control, good balance, plenty of skills. He's a youth prospect, which I think makes him improve quickly. And his graph again, it's a bit flat at the moment, but uh, he will improve still. But yeah, that was just my idea of going through what I normally look for. Then I add them to my list. And then again, this is not the full list, but you can see here that I've got 44 on my list. I can't remember what the maximum you can hold is. Maybe 50? But yeah, just quickly jump back into my team. Like I say, ideally, a couple of wingers would be great. A goalkeeper, a centre-back. I'm not so sure, maybe a left-back. But we have got that young stat we could sign from the youth team. He's pretty young as well. I'm thinking maybe centre-midfield. I mean, this is a lot. It's pretty much <laughs> about five of the squad. But ideally, a goalkeeper, centre-mid, wingers... And obviously, if you could get a really good striker, that'd be ideal. But we've only got so much money to play for. And just looking at the teams, the players that I've actually got on my list, you've got some decent uh, release fees here. Now, Lafont is definitely one I want to get because he's a young goalkeeper. He plays for Nantes in France. He's 21 on here. I'm not sure maybe if that hasn't been edited. I think he might be a little bit older in real life in what would be 2022-23. Great stats. He's already got the skills that you want a goalkeeper to have. And again, yes, it's gone a bit flat, but he will improve. I think we're definitely going to put in a bid for him. I don't want to be too re unrealist. Now, I am in a Division 2, so I understand that I would not be buying him in real life. But it is a game. You want to enjoy it. The, there are certain players that I will go for that are not realistic. Some that I won't go for if I think... No, that's just too far. I want to have a, a bit of a mix. There are some players that I think they're going to really strengthen the team and they're going to be around for a number of years. I'm willing to not be too realistic on those sort of cases. On others, I'll probably not sign the players I would really like now and maybe go for a bit more younger, not as good overall at the moment and get those instead. Now, unfortunately, I've just gone to buy him and there's not even an option. I think he must have just signed a contract or they may be saying he's just signed for the club. I might have a look first, see if there's any other goalkeepers around, even just as a, a, a stopgap. I think he's probably ideally the one I want long term. Now, just having a look around, I'm really a bit torn, but I think the first player I'm going to put in a bid for is uh, Graven Birch. Release fee of 24 million, well, 25 nearly. And he's only 20 years old and really good all-round player. He can probably play in defensive mid as well if he wants to. Yeah, he can. So I think we're going to put in for a bid for him there. So this is what we're going in with. We're putting the transfer fee as the release clause. So we don't have to negotiate with Bayern Munich. He still doesn't look too impressed, even though I've offered him a little bit more salary. Three years release fee. We've sort of kept the same roughly. A bit of a appearance bonus and goal bonus I've added on there doesn't look too impressed so that one may not materialize but let's see what they come back with again Timber doesn't look impressed but we'll see what he comes back with as well really decent looking uh, center back I think it's the just the annual salary we are quite limited by that I'm also putting in a bid for Herrera if you look here he uh, plays for Girona at the moment and he's center mid but again can play defensive mid as well really so one good bit of news amongst four not so good news we've actually had a bit accepted for Fabio Vieira from Arsenal who's an attack midfielder as you can see the others have all uh, broken down because it is going to be difficult at first getting players so we may have to play the majority of the start of the season with pretty much the squad we've got with the odd exception but Fabio Vieira yeah, he would be on a three-year contract to 2023. He had a, a release fee of just under 12 million. But again, once he's in the club and we'll renegotiate his contract in the future, we'll try and get that release fee removed or at least increased a lot. So what we'll do is we'll just accept that now. And as you can see, that gets removed from the transfer budget and the salary budget. So we haven't got much 
salary budget remaining, which is what I was saying before, we've got a fairly hefty transfer budget. It doesn't do you much good if you can't actually pay the players. And as you can see here, we have Vieira arriving at the club grounds. This is more of an understandable cutscene when you've actually got a player you've signed rather than a youth player and he meets the manager. So our first official signing from outside the club. And just have a look here, we found a goalkeeper called Schubert and he actually looks really decent. Now, I still don't think we're going to be able to get him because he does not impress him with pretty much maxed out all of this sort of stuff. We could try and reduce the release fee, but no, I'm not going to do that. Let's just go on with that and see if we'll get him. And just to let you know, we have received a bid in, the first bid we've had in for one of our players. So Ronnie, who we put on the transfer list, will receive a bid just under his market value, but we're going to get rid of him. You can see he's on a massive decline and it gets us a little bit of money. I'm not too worried about the money itself, but it releases a bit of budget as well. Again, not much, but we just need to free up some space and he's probably not going to play, to be honest. As you can see, it adds a million to the transfer and just over 150 grand into the salary budget. We've also received a bid in for our current first choice goalkeeper. We are going to accept that. I know it's a very, very nominal fee, but we are going to accept it for partly for a reason. Um, there's been some update in our negotiations for other teams. As you can see, I did put in a bid for Doku and Timber, who I tried to get Pussy. They've both broken down, but two goalkeepers we looked at, Schubert and Ivan, or Ivan, both same sort of overall, both similar transfer fee. Annual salary Schubert's a lot higher. They've both got real faces, which is good. Ages, Ivan's a little bit older. You'd probably say Schubert is... Uh, they've both just got different stats really in different places, so Schubert's probably the better keeper, really. But his annual salary is a fair bit higher in terms of what we're looking at. I think overall, potentially this could be a goalkeeper that would have around for a while. So, I think we're going to accept Schubert. And as you can see, that uh, obviously drops our salary budget that we've got available down a bit as well. And we'll get a slightly different cutscene this time. This is normally, I think, when you sign... I don't know if it's random or whether you're certain sign a play of a certain value that um, you get different cutscenes. I'm not 100% sure. But we've got our goalkeeper. Now we are a few further days ahead and we've had some bids for players just being unsuccessful. We've went in for some players went in for before. A couple of players I probably shouldn't have gone for anyway. So I've just been looking through the list and, and players that fit within our salary budget. A guy I like here called Carlos Perez plays for Celta de Vigo. Um, he's only 22. He's got all round, he's got pretty decent stats. He's got a few skills, which is good. I'm not so bothered about the actual skills, but things like long range drive through passing, they're good ones. I don't tend to use the actual skill moves an awful lot. He's obviously progressing and he's got a real face, which is great. So I think I'm going to put in a bid for him. Okay, so he'd welcome a move to our club. So I think we'll agree to the release fee. Do we risk trying to drop the annual salary? Yeah, maybe a little bit. Yeah, I think we'll try and drop it a bit. Let's let's go in for that and see how that goes. Okay, so just jump back in. I've been making a few offers around, and strangely, I've actually got three acceptance. Catron, first of all, was one a while back. I forgot which Pez game it was, but really enjoyed him. He is actually a free agent, so we wouldn't have to pay a transfer fee. Carlos Perez, right winger, which we definitely want. He's left footed, which is great. I do like playing wingers that are going to cut inside. He's only 22. Decent all round stats, not like massively spectacular. He's got no greens. Again, he's at that age where he can definitely improve. Xerxy from Bologna, I'm really impressed with him. He's got some decent stats. Finishing needs to be improved, but good speed. He's only young as well, remember. He's only 19. These two players have got a few years on him, so he can improve massively beyond what they are now at, at that age. I'm definitely going to go for him, so let's accept that. Let's have a look. What's his annual salary? It's going to be 679. So managed to get him on quite a low annual salary. Can I accept this? Even though we haven't got the salary budget. Let's have a look. Ah, damn. So yeah, we can't go over the salary budget. I thought you might be able to go into the nega for a short period. So maybe if we try and renegotiate. Let's do that. But what we'll do is we'll bump up the appearance, the goal bonus, and the win bonus. This is the squad we're going with. This is what we think is our strongest 11. 
at the moment. We've got the new goalkeeper in Schubert. He looks really good. We're sticking with the two centre-backs that we've got and the two wing-backs as well. Hedic in defensive mid. We've got Kasseldin in centre mid. And then we've got Fabio Vieira, who is going to take the place of where Arcos was. He's actually going on the wing, on the left. Not his favourite position. He'd be better at attack mid. You can see he jumps up to a 72. He could play centre mid as well. But at the moment, we haven't got really anyone much better than him that could play in the wing anyway. Carlson's going to be on the right for now. Again, that's a weak spot. And the new boy as well, Zirgzi, who I like the look of. Again, he's he needs to improve. You know, his finishing isn't great at the moment, things like that. But he's only young, so I'm happy to, to start with that. Just having a quick look at the schedule. The match we've got today is against Ponferradina. Hopefully I've said that right. Then in just over a week's time, we've got the transfer window ending. And then we've actually got the Copa del Rey. That's going to be tough. Real Zaragoza, they're a good team, so that'll be a struggle. We'll jump straight into this match and see which team we're going to pick, depending on condition of the players. Okay, so we're just having a look at the uh, condition of the players. I just had a sneaky look and it's not good. Uh, Zerkion is a downward red. Now, basically, you'd never want to play players when they're on that. Ericsson is as well. So first of all, Ericsson. Um, hmm, Caulfield actually goes. Okay. Well, we'll put in Caulfield because he randomly jumps higher than what his stats are. I know that does that sometimes. Okay. So this is the changes we've gone in with. As you can see, there's been a bit of movement around there, but we've actually brought in Castledean from centre mid to attack mid because he actually does shoot up a lot. Rice were brought in because he is on this flashing, which I think means they are going to improve more quickly when that condition hours flashing it may only last a few games it may last a while longer but you kind of want to play them and with Fabio Vieira being on an orange downward you know he'll get his day but these guys are on form I think this is a good lineup to go in with Jarvis is up top because his finishing is pretty good it's I think it's 87 yeah so he's not a great all-round player but finishing he's pretty good so if we can get some good service might get some decent chances and just looking at the strips, we are going to go in with our home kit and we're going to let them play in their orange away kit. I do think the kits look great on this option file. I mean, the stadium looks absolutely beautiful there, doesn't it? La Rosadella is our home stadium. If I get any pronunciations wrong, do forgive me. I'm happy to be corrected. Now, obviously, just in the first match, we are going to have a quick look at the uh, the introductions. Not going to do this every match. But kicking off the campaign in style would be a great start. Here it is, guys. Kickoff on the first day of the season. It's going to be difficult. We're trying to get used to this game rather than PES 6. I have played a few friendly matches. Um, but also, you know, they were with just normal squads. It's going to take a while to get used to this. See that horrendous touch straight away. But well won back. Oh, great save. Oh, such a wonderful ball through. We did say, you know, he's not the best all round that centre forward, but if we get him in, he could uh, get a goal. And he just toe pokes it. A really nice attempt at a finish there. So we're only four minutes in, and we've already had a really decent chance. One concern is we are playing quite an attacking lineup, so we may get caught out and we may have to revisit that uh, formation depending on how it goes. Oh, chance here. Oh, lovely finish. There it is, 1 0. Did not expect to knock that in, but Carlson was said we're weak on that right hand side, and he's just, at least for now, proven us wrong. Nice ball through. Just let it run past them. Thought I'd lost the chance and just killed it in nicely. Showed a bit of strength there. Nice ball through. 
like I say, thought I'd lost the chance there, should have taken a touch, but slotted in past the keeper. And obviously I'll see how we go in the first few matches and getting used to it, but if we feel like we need to increase the difficulty at any stage, obviously we've had a good start in this game, but we don't know how it's going to go. You know, every match is different. We may just be having a flying start. But we will certainly look to increase the difficulty if we play a few matches and we feel like it's uh, maybe a little bit on the on the easy side. We've got room to do that. Here's Carson again. He's, he needs a bit of support though. Now Arcas is potentially one of our best players. Um, well, he is probably the best player in terms of what we started with before we made transfers. Oh, lost the ball there. I was just looking to play it out wide and took my off the ball a little bit. Thump, thump and uh, challenge there. Nice ball through to Arcas. Nearly lost the ball there. Managed to get it back. Oh, went for the spectacular. Ah, poor ball there. Good effort though. I mean, getting a ball in the box. Not a bad thing to do. And there's a throw in. So midway through this first half and really pleased with how it's going so far. I was half expecting to be, you know, really struggling. But of course we're starting in Division 2, so we're playing against weaker teams as well. Um, so I suppose that's one thing that I hadn't really considered that much. You know, if we started in the Division 1, we would be having a lot tougher time. Ah, that was the wrong place to go. Really just overplaying it there. But win it back. Nicely done. Oh, nearly a nice ball to Argos. He was looking for the 1 2. Lofted through ball, just not uh, quite finding him. Gotta watch this uh, left hand side here. Good tackle. Gotta be careful. You can quite easily give away free kicks or penalties. That would have been in that case. The few friendly matches I play in, tackling is certainly a lot different than Pez 6, just because of what I'm used to. Arcas. Oh, nearly two. Good save from the keeper. The keeper has actually made a couple of decent saves so far. Hit edge. Another good save. A little bit more comfortable that time, I'd probably say. Oh, that's a, yeah, that's a comfortable save as well. But you know what? We've had about five shots on target already. Um, you know, we're dominating the game. They can't really get a foothold, but they do look, look like they could be a little bit dangerous on the counter-attack. And that's a foul. Are they going to take it quickly? Yes, they are. Nicely cleared there, and this could be a counter-attack of our own. Oh, that was a decent ball. It was he's not the quickest player though. And bear in mind that you know two of the three players we've signed we haven't even started. We're starting the goalkeeper who hasn't really seen the ball at all yet. Um But, you know, I was really hoping Vieira could start and um, the striker as well. Oh, decent strike. Straight at the keeper, though. Xerxy was the centre forward. I'll, I'll get used to their names, obviously, in time. But there it is, first half. Really decent half. We're not going to look at the highlights yet. Um, let's just jump back straight into the second half. Yeah, but really impressive so far. Hitch got the assist as well, don't forget. 
Uh, it was a really nice pass. Ooh, just lost it there. Needs to concentrate. Um, but here's the, the goal scorer who I did not... Probably one of the least expected goal scorers, I would say. After I was um, not quite slagging off the right wingers, but... Comfortable save there. But I was saying that was one of the positions we really needed to strengthen. And we still will. Um, could get caught out here, though. This is where we may get caught, uh, you know, playing those fairly high line with the wing max and playing a pretty attacking position. That's where we may get caught out, but a chance of our own here. Here comes the wing back. Oh, how did he miss the header there? Should have uh, got something on it. Ah, decent save. And that's a corner. We'll look to make some subs in the next five or ten minutes. Uh, I don't think we really want to set the back to be taken it. I think we'll put on Arcas as the uh, the corner taker, at least from this side. Oof. Again, no nice tackle. Thought we might get caught out there. Ah, straight the keeper. Yeah, the, the wing backs obviously you're trying to put in crosses and that. You know, you need the, the passing skills to do that. Oh, oh my word. What a finish that was. Well, for all the dominance that we've had, one of the first real attacks they've had in a, quite a while, and then they've scored. And again, that was my worry, getting caught on the counter-attack, which we did, and there's a massive gap there. We actually had numbers back. Stunning finish, though. Not really much the keeper could do either. I was going to have a look at that. Now we are going to make some substitutions. So, okay, so I've brought on uh, Bjer for Carlson. I've got on Harrington for Castledine. And I've taken off Charles and put on Gioyce, I think he's called. Um, yeah, we just need to. I know I'm taking off the winger that scored, but. I really think those changes could make a difference. And Bjez is the, the young start we got from the, the youth squad, and that's not his favourite position, but he's left-footed, and I thought I'd give him a go. And he could be in straight away in the action. And he is. Oh, really decent pass, and the finish was just... needed to maybe take a little bit more time and, and care with it rather than just trying to blast it, and he's hit it straight at the defender. But again, we've got to be careful. You know, we've still got a point at this stage. Um, nice ball out to Argos. I haven't seen him as much as we'd probably like, considering he's probably our star player, especially with the the people we've got out. Oof, dangerous. Nice tackle, but... He... Oh, my word. Well, how did he not score here? I mean, what a save that is. I mean, I thought he had saved it, but I, I, I couldn't actually believe that he would have from that um, that short range. I mean, on his first game, that's like potentially like save of the season. Um, on again. Another great save there. I'm just going to clear that, get rid of it. It's actually fell quite well. We were dominating the first half, but we have uh, 
we've lost it a little bit, lost the plot a little bit, I think. Um, I just got muscled out there. Oh, nearly got it back. I tell you what, this is a pretty entertaining first game. I know it's, you know, it's not like it's a 5-4 or anything, but 1-1, one, one, but there's chances flying. I mean, we had about five chances in the first half. Rice, ah, uh, decent strike. It was on target, but it's never really going to trouble, trouble the keeper. And that'll be a free kick. I think we are going to have to have a look in the next match at maybe shoring up the defence a bit and dropping those wing backs a little bit deeper, more like the standard position. Um, I'm not even sure we might get much benefit from their attacking sort of prowess, which they don't have. Um, here's Arkas. Oh, blocked. Really nice move. Still got it though. Arkas. <laughs> oh my word. What a defensive mix up there. And the star man, like I was saying, he hasn't had the best of games, but he's got in there, won the ball, and tapped it into the back of the net. See, I don't know what the defender's doing, really playing about when he shouldn't be, and he's given the keeper no chance there. And the way they've come back in the second half, potentially they were the ones more likely to win it, I think. Shocking defending. I mean, if we hold on for this, we've... Um, that might not be... might not happen yet. Uh, but if we do, we've really snatched this when... In the first half... We thoroughly deserve to be leading, and probably by more, but... Um, oh, chance here. Oh, nice save. Difficult angle. Oh, good defending. Was Thought I was just going to get in the end of that there. Not look at that, it's a weird angle there. And again, yeah, we'll have our gas taking this. So only a few minutes left. Really good first game. As in entertainment-wise, at least as well. I mean, ah, oh, it's offside. You know, I was hoping it would be an entertaining game. And I don't know about you, but I feel like it has been 2-1. You know, goal in the last few minutes. Um, end to end action, really. You know, it hasn't been... A boring game by any means there's been plenty of chances and we'll have a look at the stats later just need to concentrate on keeping this at 2-1 though Bjerg could be in here though oh good effort really nice save and their keeper's played well he's made some great saves some fairly straightforward ones as well but that was low. It was going in the bottom corner. Yeah, nice save. I am going to change to be completely defensive just in case. Now, I could just play this short, but I'm not going to do that. Oh, I should have played it short. And there it is. It's 2-1, really entertaining first game. Absolutely dominated the first half. And in the second half, it just... Once they scored, it just all fell to pieces. Managed to pull, pull ourselves back together a little bit. And uh, we got the winner. Maybe from a little bit fortuitous circumstances. But got to credit Arkas. He, he got in there. He won the ball. He tapped it in. And here are the stats. 59% possession. 
I did have a quick look on, on the first half, um, and I think it was about 70% or just under. 15 shots with 12 being on target. Um, and if you look at that, I mean, they only had four shots, but they got them all on target and they scored one. So, yeah, pretty good going there. And just looking at the ratings, really not surprised that their goalkeeper was the best performer on their team. And also their number 10, Yui. Arcas got man of the match. I think without that tapping at the end, he wouldn't have got it. But, you know, he did have a few good passes and got on the ball more in the second half. Carlson got a seven as well. He got the first goal. Hebich, he got an assist, played well. So, yeah, really impressed. And I thought Bajer, when he came on, he looked really threatening on the right there. So, potentially, that could be a good position, actually, that we thought we really needed to strengthen. But we might have some decent young players in there. And just some more good news. Strangely, maybe not as needed as we thought. But um, I did try go back in for Kutron, who we just didn't have enough money to, to buy him with the annual salary. We tried to reduce it a bit, but he's rejected it. But Carlos Perez, right winger, he's left footed, 77 rated, which is really good. He's only 22. Look at those all round stats, so plenty of oranges, and he's obviously going to improve a lot. So his proposed annual salary, it's just under the cap by a thousand. So we are going to accept that. So sorry, I missed miscounted but it's uh, 1800 now we've got sort of a salary budget so we're certainly not going to be buying anyone soon with that i just thought i'd quickly show you a couple of changes before we uh, leave the episode obviously i brought in carlos perez straight in at right wing i know carlson did well from the start and he scored and then Bajer came on and, and he did well but he is going to make such a difference you know this right side here you know, you've got Fabio Vieira, Xerxes, who who hasn't played yet either, and um, Carlos Perez. That could be a really strong area for us, attacking-wise. And then Arcas is probably our best original player, um, and he's one that can improve a lot. Got a pretty strong front three there and some good attack in midfield. But yeah, I really appreciate you guys joining me. Really loved the support that I got on the Pez 6 Master League career. Got some great comments and people saying how much they enjoy the old style Pez. I hope you guys can stick with me on this one. I know it's the newer game. It's maybe not everyone's favourite, but, you know, the gameplay is really good. And the Master League is good. It's not perfect. There's some things that really could be improved and I'm not going to get them to, into them right now. But it's a really enjoyable game to play. It's nice and fluid. Lots of different types of goals you can score. But the computer can also hit you on the counter-attack as you see in that last match. And can we just say what a save that was from, from our keeper in the first match. I know we scored two goals and we had plenty of chances in the first half, but he pretty much saved the match for us in that moment. I don't think I've seen quite a, a save quite like it. I've been playing quite a few friendly matches and the keepers are definitely improved than some of the old games, but boy, that was uh, that was spectacular. So he could be a, a, a cult icon for the club already just with that first match. What a debut. Leave a like if you did enjoy this. Drop a comment down below because I do really love the interaction with you guys more than anything, really. Let me know what you thought. Any potential players you'd like to see? Anyone on that list that um, you think I should go for? What position should I fill? What should I prioritise first when we do have that cash available? Subscribe as well if you do want to keep up to date with the, the content on the channel. But again, just a massive thank you because I couldn't do this without you guys. I really, you know, I do it because of it entertains me to do this. But... You know, just seeing comments and people enjoying it really makes such a difference and just makes me want to, to keep doing it and improving myself and improving the editing and all of that sort of stuff. I think it's going to be a really good series. I really do. And I'm really happy with the team that I chose. So any Malaga fans out there, give me a shout. But hopefully you can join me next time where we're playing Real Zaragoza in the Copa del Rey. I think that's going to be a really tough match. Thank you again. And I'll speak to you all soon.